Sabbath peace. peace. Another opportunity for us to come together and hear and learn of the word of truth that is given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the, the saints uh, watching on the camera, to the saints scattered around the world, the saints in the chat. Uh, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. All right. Last week, what did we talk about? The fruit? Okay. <laughs> that was two weeks ago, okay. No, no for the for the poor. That was about three weeks ago. What about last week? What we got? <laughs> Yo. Just a lot of that's hate. Nah, no. no. A whole lot of hate. A whole lot of hate coming from, from the chat right now. You know what I'm saying? Y'all can't see it. Y'all ain't in the chat. There's a whole lot of hate in the YouTube chat. What else? You know what I'm saying? What y'all remember? We were doing, we were looking at some miracles happening. Y'all was walking through doing some miracles. After he did some miracles, he told the people that y'all are a generation of vipers. And that, that he said, uh, he said that uh, y'all don't get no sign except the sign of Jonah. Right? Three days and three nights in the well. No. Well, Yahweh Shua, he did, he did a number of miracles, right? Did a number of miracles that we looked at, and, and the people, remember, the people looked at him, and they thought he did the miracles by demons, right? He said, but by Beelzebub did he do those miracles, right? So Yahweh Shua, he, he responded to him and was like, no, 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 no. You know what I'm saying? With Beelzebub cast out Beelzebub, you know what I'm saying? With a devil cast out a devil? So he is like, no, nah, man, look, you either with me or you against me, Right? In other words, telling people to pick a side, there's no middle ground. He said, look, if you either helping me put this thing together or you're scattering abroad. In other words, you make you making a mess, right? You're making stuff worse. And so that's the mindset that we gotta have. We gotta make sure that we always pick a side. We can't play the middle ground. What does it look like to play the middle ground with God? What does that look like? Like Pharaoh. Right? When you play the middle ground with the most high, what it looked like is <clears throat> It looked like you saying, oh, I love God so much. But then you go out and you sin in or you're not representing the most high God. Are you scared to talk about God when, when the time is there, when the time is right or anything like that? Right. That's what it looks like when you not you haven't chosen a side. Right. You just kind of kind of play on both sides of the fence. And the most high God is telling us through Yahweh Shua. He's like, no, you got to pick a side. Right. You got to pick a side. So he did. He did another a number of miracles, just kind of letting the continuing to let the people know. Um, who he is and, and where he's from and, and teaching the people. And remember that comes off of the back of the sermon that he gave where he spoke as if he had authority. He was teaching as if he had the authority. And so now the people are kind of getting more insight, not only to what he teach, but also getting insight into what he's able to do, right? More miracles that he's doing. All of this is happening in a place called Capernaum, right? So let's pull up a map real quick. Let me see if I can get a map going real quick. Let me see here. So all of this is happening in a place called Capernaum. Let's put it on the big screen. Oops, that's not the big screen I wanted. Why did it go to the wrong screen? Here. Oh, that didn't go to the wrong screen. This went to the wrong screen. One second. 
Let's take that off. Two. And slideshow. And let's fix this. Slideshow. Put you on number three. And let's try this again. Nope, that didn't work out either. On oh, and slideshow, we're gonna put two. All right, third time's a charm. There we go. All right, so when we look at the big screen here, all right, we're up here in Nazareth right now. All right, so just so y'all can see it, we up here at the top, all right? So we're not in Nazareth, but we're over there in that area. So let's kind of look at exactly the area that we in right now is actually all right so this is all the traveling that we did when he was young so now we up here in this purple area capernaum kind of kind of in this section right here so yahushua is traveling all through these areas doing miracles so his fame is coming and you remember the priest the priest came way down here from jerusalem and came up to capernaum right so they came from way down here all right, and then made their way all the way up to Capernaum. And when they went up there, Yahushua, he called them vipers, all right? He basically was telling them, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is not, this is not, you know what I'm saying? Like, this, what I'm talking about is not for y'all. Y'all some hypocrites. So he was trying to explain that to them and make sure they understood it. So now we about to continue where we left off, right? And continue talking uh, or watching how Yahushua kind of dealt with the people. So let's pick it up in Mark chapter 4. This is Mark chapter 4. We're going to start at verse 1. This is Mark chapter 4, verse 1. Why the brother reading? I'm going to see if I can kick people out this chat. And he began again to teach by the seaside, and there gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered. Right, so it say, look, in Mark chapter four, it said he began again to teach by the seaside. So you remember, he often went to a boat. We talked about before how he kind of hopped in the boat. So this time he walked. He, he's on the seaside, and he's like, listen, it's time to learn, right? So he start teaching the people, and then who who gathered to him? In a great multitude. So it was a great multitude. What does that mean? A great multitude. A great amount of what? People, right? It was a bunch of people. That's how we say it. It was a bunch of people that gathered around, right? So a whole bunch of people came and they gathered to him. They came close to him. They all trying to like see what he has to say, right? Watch this. Keep going. So that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea, and the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by parables, and said unto them in his doctrine, Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. And it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And some fell on stony ground where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had. When no he says so, what does that mean? When he says so, there came a sower. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. That means somebody who plants seeds, right? So when, the, when you see that in the Bible, so like right now we think of so, we usually talking about like somebody sewing clothes together. Like somebody sold this shirt for me. You know what I mean? It's very nice. You know what I mean? But usually in the Bible when you see so, it's talking about planting seed, right? So it's saying that there was someone who plants seeds and they threw some seeds. Think about it like on the sidewalk, right? They just threw some seeds like on the sidewalk. Or you know how they be having like the dirt trails? You know what I'm saying? Like they threw some seeds on the dirt trails. And it says that a bird came as soon as they planted it and came up and just ate the seed. Right? Keep going. And some fell on stony ground where it had much earth and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. Right. And so some of them, 
they put it on stony ground. So, you know, kind of like you was out there pulling them weeds, right? So when you out there looking at the weeds and you pulling the weeds, some of them weeds was super easy to pull up, huh? You know why? Read what he said. There's on stony ground because what happened? And some fell on stony ground where it had not much earth. And immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. Right? So it wasn't deep enough under the ground. So immediately it was easy to pull out, wasn't it? Just like, you know, just pull that thing right on out. Don't even give you no resistance. Right? Because there was no depth of earth. It wasn't deep. It wasn't rooted. Right? It didn't go down to the root. So he said, if some, some seeds, they get thrown on the pathway and birds just come eat them things right on up. Right? You ever been walking in the park or whatever? You see a bunch of ducks or the birds or whatever. You throw out a little bread. How long it take them to get it? Right there. Right? Because that's where they at. So you walking on the pathway, guess what's out there? That the bird's waiting right there because they know people dropping stuff that they can eat. So you throw it on the pathway, boom, bird come eat it up. He said, some is like throwing it in the rocks, right? You throw it in, the, you throw the seeds in the rocks. Well, sure, some might try to grow out of that seed, but it's not really deep. So anything can come and just pull it right on up. It's easy to pull up, right? What else though? But when the sun was up, it was scorched because it had no root. It withered away. Mm-hmm. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. Right? Then some fell on, on thorns. So you, you know, I know what a thorn is, right? So you like you grow roses, like the natural roses. Usually when you grab a rose, it got thorns on the stem. You know what I'm saying? It'll, you know, it'll cause you to bleed if you squeeze it hard enough. So it's saying that some, some seed, you plant it where other seed is growing roses or some other type of plant that got thorns on it. And so the one with thorns end up wrapping around the other plant and it chokes it out. So that plant dies because the stronger plant is still living. Right. And then what else? And others fell on good ground and, ye and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some 30, some 60 and some 100. Right. But then sometimes it's thrown on good ground. And when it's thrown on good ground, guess what? Everything work out. Can you go check downstairs on the, uh, the lasagna for me? Uh, you know what I'm saying? You throw, you throw it on good ground and then it springs up and it grows and it multiplies throughout the years, right? So these are like, this is a parable, right? Yahushua is giving us a parable. What is a parable? A parable is a saying, right? Or a way of saying something that compares it to something else, right? So there's a message, like a metaphor, right? Behind what he's saying, but he's comparing it to something else, right? So this is a parable that he's telling us the book is about to explain to us that he spoke to the people oftentimes in parables. Right. So we don't know what he's talking about. He just pop out like, yeah, some people, they throw seeds and they throw it on the ground and some seeds are thrown on the rocks and some seeds they throw, on, you know, what I'm saying with the thorns, but some seeds they thrown on good soil. Somebody say that to you. It's like, yeah, I, I guess you're right. You know what I'm saying? But what does that mean? Like, what do you, What's your purpose of saying that to me right now? Because you got to imagine these people are following him. He's walking around. He might randomly. He, he's not telling nobody what his plan is. It's not like he say, yo, I'm about to walk up to the next city. Give me a little bit of water. And then I'm going to start healing people again. Right. He's not sharing people with him. It's good. He's not sharing. people. Is it in there still? The, the, yeah. So he's not sharing people, sharing with people like the plan. Right. The only thing he's doing is he just going where he's going and then letting it rock. Right. So the people are looking at him. They like, we don't know the next time he's going to stop and start healing people. We don't know the next time he's going to do that. We don't know the next time he's going to do this. So they just following him. Right. So they following him and then he start teaching. But when he's teaching, they looking like, oh, let's see what he said. La next, like last time, I know what he was talking about. At least I, I think I know what he is talking about. He is telling me, look, if somebody, steal something from you give him your coat right if somebody try to if your brother you got a problem with your brother don't take him to court settle it before it goes to court you know what i'm saying don't look on these women because you might commit adultery in your heart right that type of stuff he like i understand don't judge lest you be judged the same way you judge somebody is the same way you gonna be judged you know what i'm saying look at the tree right the tree what comes out of the tree that is what's in the heart right that was a parable too Right. But he's given us all these things. And so when he stops and he ready to teach, everybody clamoring around like, oh, what he got to say this time? 
Then the man just, I just want y'all to put yourself in the situation, right? Everybody clamming around like, oh, what do you say? People standing on their tippy toes trying to see him and all that. And y'all sure say, some seeds are thrown in the pathway. Some seeds are thrown in the rocks. Some seeds thrown amongst the thorns, but other seeds are thrown on good soil. And then he just stopped. He said, the kingdom of heaven is like a sower who goes, throws the seeds. So they're trying to piece that together. Yeah. He just stopped, right? I like to imagine he just stopped. Look at everybody. And then he said, the kingdom of heaven, just like that. <laughs> right? And so now everybody kind of look at it and be like. Wait. <laughs> he who has the ears to hear, let him hear. Yeah. If you understand what I just said, good. Right. When he say that, when he say he who has an ear to hear, let him hear. It's basically saying if you can, if you understand what I'm talking about, you should pay attention. You know what I'm saying? So everybody looking like, I think I understand it. I think what he's saying is, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think he said. So everybody looking around. Right. But the average person is not going to understand what he's talking about. Yeah. I mean, I, that's a fact. Some people do throw seeds in, on the pathway. Right. But it's like, I don't really know what this is talking about. Right. Keep going. Watch this. And he said unto them, he that has the ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve asked him of the parable. Right. So he spoke to all the people like that. Right. And then it says when he was what? Alone. So what happened to all the multitude? Go. I like to imagine he said that fool into two of them and they looking like, okay. Now I think I know what you, I think I follow you. I think I see where you're going because seed produce fruit. And last time you told us, you know, a man by his fruit. So sometimes you can't see a man fruit because he's walking too far in the pathway. You said it was a narrow path. I get what he's saying. Right. And people are trying to put it together, but they making a mess of it. They don't know what they're talking about. So eventually everybody get bored. And guess what they do? I'm hungry. I'm going to go ahead and go home and get there. You know what I'm saying? Were you going with me? This, that, another. So everybody leave. They go home. What y'all should do. He stays. He don't say nothing to them. They can do whatever they want to do. But guess who stays with them? Let's see. When he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve asked of him the parable. Right. So when he was alone, they that were about him, in other words, they that were around him with the twelve, the twelve are the twelve disciples, right? The people that he said, hey, follow me. Remember in the beginning when we start reading the, the gospel, he had telling a whole bunch of people to follow him. It was twelve people in particular that stay close to him. Right. So those are the twelve disciples. He said, follow me. So the 12 stuck around and they were around him when everybody left. And then what happened? And he said unto them. Unto you, it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But unto who? Unto the disciples. He's talking to the disciples. So the multitudes left. Now the only ones around is the disciples. And then he waited until everybody left. And guess what he said to the disciples? Y'all, it's given unto y'all to understand what I just said. Watch what he say next. But unto them that are outside, all these things are done in parables. Mm -hmm. Or that are without, all these things are done in parables. Right? So everybody else, he said, for y'all, the disciples, it's given unto you to understand what I'm talking about. But for everybody else, they have to get it in parables. In other words, they have to get it through a riddle. That's what a parable is. It's like a riddle where you have to kind of figure out like it's like you got to piece it together like a little puzzle. Right. Like, OK, the seed that's sown on the footpath is this and the seed that's in the rocky place represents this situation. And so you got to kind of piece it together and figure out what it means. He says it has to be a puzzle for everybody out there. But for y'all, I can just give it to y'all. Watch what he say next. This is the disciples he's talking to. 
that seeing they may see and not perceive, hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. So it's important to understand what he's saying. He's saying, listen, read it again. I just want y'all to, I'm a, we, let's read it straight through up to that part again. Um, and then I'm going to try to explain what he's saying. Go back maybe two verses. Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables. That seeing they may see and not perceive, hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. Right? So he's saying, I'm giving it to them in parables. I'm giving y'all the straight. I'm giving it to y'all straight, right? The reason why I'm doing this, and this is important to understand, he's saying the reason why I'm giving it to them in a confusing way, in a way that's difficult to understand, is because with them seeing, although they have eyes to see, they do not understand, right? Although they have ears to hear, they do not understand. Because if they did understand, they would mess around and get saved. That is important to calculate. When you're putting together your understanding of God and your understanding of Yahushua, the one who loves the whole world so much that he gave his only begotten son, right? That guy, the one that they imagine out there, you also have to factor in that out of his own mouth, he said, oh no, I'm intentionally giving it to them in a way that they not going to understand. Because if they did understand, they might be saved. He's making the path difficult. Now, when we say that, it sounds alarming. Like, why would God do that? But he just told you that. He said, narrow is the way and straight is the path. So if narrow is the way and straight is the path, guess what? That's the difficult way. When we say straight, it's not talking about straight as in, a lot of people think it's talking about straight as in, it's straight ahead. No. The word straight there means difficulty, tribulation, struggle, right? So you have to go through a difficult path, right? A narrow, difficult path, which means it's like a tightrope, right? This path requires a lot of skill. You can't fall, right? And that's the path you got to work. He told us that already, but guess what? We've been Christianized and and, 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 and all this stuff all our life. So when we hear it, that don't mean anything to us. It's like, yep, narrow the path. That's right. Difficult path. Yeah, that's right. That's how it is. Just walk with God. That's how it is. And we just, we just make it nothing. But no, think about it. He's telling you the same thing right here. He's saying, yeah, I'm giving it to them in parables. They can't get it. The ones out there, they can't get it. All them people, all them great multitudes that follow me, and they follow me up here and they clamor to get next to me to hear me teach. Then I start teaching and I told him it. I told him it in a parable. I didn't say nothing else. Just stop. You know what I'm saying? No, you know, you saw it see this way, saw it see that way, saw it see that way, but you saw it see this way, it's gonna grow. Everybody acting like he ain't understand, like, amen. Amen, brother. Amen. You know what he's talking about? I don't know what he's talking about, but amen, though. Amen. Amen. That's exactly what we see today. It's a bunch of people that will lie to you and be like, oh, no, nah, I'll tell you what, I know the word. I know the Bible. I know the Bible front to back. Ooh, why, you know, I love when God just be talking to me, just be lying their darn butts off. And guess what? They don't understand a lick of what God is talking about. But they will lie and pretend like they do. And the reason is, the most High God is speaking to them in a way, where read it again, that last verse that you just read. That seeing they may see He's saying, look, seeing, they what? They may see and not perceive. They see, but they don't know what they darn looking at. And hearing, and hearing what? And hearing they may hear and not understand. They hear it, but they have no idea what they listening to. It ain't like their eyes don't work. They looking at it like the words right on the page. Yep, they reading the same Bible we read. Yeah, that's what he said. That's what he said, brother. But guess what? When they see it, they have no idea what they're perceiving. When, when we get to talking and people be hearing it, they have no idea what they're actually listening to. And that's because the Most High God put it, put it in front of them in a way that they cannot understand it. But guess who does understand it? The disciples. Watch this. This he is important. Them, know ye not this parable, and how then will you know all parables? Mm -hmm. He said, if you don't know this very parable, 
How in the world will you know all parables? Watch this. The sower soweth the word. The sower, <laughs> when they say sower, remember, it's talking about the person that spreads seeds, right? That's planting seeds. So the plant, the person who's planting seeds is planting seeds of the word. What else? And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. Mm hmm. So the ones where they're just throwing it on the path, right? That one is just like somebody that hears the word, but then Satan came and immediately took it from them. So what does that look like? In real life, that would look like me, right? I go out there and let's say, where am I at? Let's say I'm at GameStop. You know what I'm saying? So we at GameStop. And I'm talking to Brother T about the word. I'm looking like, yeah, man. No, oh, man. My Bible study was good last week. Man, can you believe God did this, that, and the other? And then somebody stopped by and they say, hey, you, I saw your YouTube. You know what I'm saying? You teach God. I always wanted to ask somebody about God, this, that, and another. Then they sister, right, is with them. And so she stopped with them to listen to what we talking about, right? And then I say it to the sister, too, because she stopped to listen. I say, listen. God do this and this, that, and other. This is all you need to be saved. This, that, and other, da, da, And I just give it to him, right? And then the sister say, she, like, she listen, she take it in, but she say, man, I don't believe none of that stuff. And then walk away. That would be equivalent to somebody taking seed, throwing it, right? And just throwing it here. And then Satan come out and steal it right off of the path. Yahushua is telling us, that is the equivalent. That is the meaning of that part of that parable, right? He's talking about somebody who hears the word, but immediately is not interested, right? Keep going. And these are they likewise, which are sown on stony ground. Right? So you remember the ones that throw seeds in the rocks, right? He about to tell us what that meant, right? The mm -hmm. ones that throw seeds in the rocks. Let's talk about it. Who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness and have no root in themselves. And so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution arise for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. Right. This is a lot more familiar with us. We see this one all the time. Right. So what does this one look like in real life? This is when we talk about the word. They might even come to Bible study or come on to the fellowship call or watch the, the study online or. Or whatever, right? They hear the word. They they might they might send me a message afterward or come shake my hand if they show up in person and they say, you know what, brother, I, you know that was a good word there. I ain't heard no word like that. And then maybe they come back the second week too, and maybe even the third week. But then what does the book say? What happens? And they endure for a time, and afterward, when affliction or persecution arise for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. As soon as they family like, what is your, is you a part of a cult? Who is this man? You, don't you know we Christians around here? Don't you know we Muslims, we Hebrew Israelites? Why are you listening to this guy? Right? Or somebody say, you know what? Why are you acting like you're trying to keep the Sabbath? Why do you think you a Hebrew? Why do you think this? As soon as somebody starts challenging them because of the word, right? They start challenging their understanding of the word, challenging where they learning it from challenging how they they trying to change their life they criticize like oh now you ain't cussing no more oh so now you just holier than now they start doing all that stuff guess what happened to them they buckle right that's the person that the seed that got thrown in the rocks that's what it's talking about it's talking about that person right they don't have the root it wasn't deep enough in them that word never got deep enough in them to the point where they can say, man, I don't care nothing about what y'all talking about. I'm doing this to save my soul. Right? I don't care what you think of me. I don't care what you think about. I don't care what you do to me. I don't care how you try to stop me from keeping the word of the most high God. I'm doing this to save my soul. Huh? Okay. Right? Keep going. Watch this. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word immediately receive it with gladness and have no root in themselves, so endure but for a while, but for a time afterward, when affliction or persecution arise for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. 
And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as here. Hold on, go back. Let me get that one, one more time. And have no root in themselves, so endure but for a time. Afterward, when the affliction of persecution or, or persecution arise, for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. Right? Immediately they are offended. In other words, what it means by offended is they go off the path. Right? They go back, they go back to their old life. Right? Keep going. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things entering in, choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. Right? So this is the other one that we see a lot. Right? This one is almost just like the last one we talk about, the ones that was that was on the rocks, right? The ones that the ones that hear the word, they might show up for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? They'll talk about how good the word is. But as soon as somebody start ch challenging the change that they're trying to make in their life and start making fun of them or or making them feel bad or putting obstacles in their path because of how they want to live, then they quit. They give up. They don't like the adversity. Right. Well, this one is very similar. Right. So this is the seed. This is the seed that's thrown uh, thrown amongst the thorns. Right. But then the thorns, when when the seed turns into a, 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 a plant, the thorns start wrapping around it and choking it out. So the, the eventually the, the plant dies, right? In this situation, Yahushua is saying, what are they? Read it again. And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. Right? So now the cares of this world and the lust of riches and the deceitfulness of men, all these things choke out the word. So this person is a little different. This person hears the word. They like the word. They show up for Bible studies, maybe a little while longer, right? They show up for Bible study. They join the fellowship call. They own it. They read the Bible in a the year. They doing whatever they can. They taking the courses online. They doing everything they can. But man, life is rough, right? Life start hitting, right? I lost my job, right? I got to pay for my kids to go out of town to see their mama. Are they daddy? Right? I got I to gotta do this. I got to do that. I got to do this. I got to do that. All these different things keep happening to me. But guess what? When it get too much, guess what has to go? The word. So they choose to have the cares of the world be above the word. So they make the word secondary. They say, okay, I'll get to that later. I just don't have time to even. even go to the Bible study or read the book for myself or or even put this much focus on understanding how to be righteous. And that's how it starts. It ain't it don't start with I'm going to just start sinning and start doing whatever I want. No, it starts with I'm going to stop feeding myself, right? The word that will encourage me in all these situations to 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 turn from sin. And when that happens, then the sin comes. You're not armed because you're not you're not you're not cultivating yourself with good information you're not cultivating yourself with y'all's wisdom so then when the sin comes you make a choice and you look back on it like damn i didn't even realize i did that then eventually it's not even a big deal and guess what that's the word being choked out right by the cares of the world by you saying man i lost my job i gotta figure out how to get another one right by you saying man i gotta i gotta do this for my family i gotta do that I gotta do this for my my wife i gotta do that I got to do this for my, my mama, you know what I'm saying? She, you know what I'm saying? This, that, another. I got to do that. You know what I'm saying? I got to make it. I already got my job, but man, I really, really, really need this promotion. I got to make it to the top level. I'm tired of watching, you know what I'm saying? I'm tired of watching everybody around me do this, that, and the other. They be on vacation. They posting on, online, this, that, and the other. I got to do it too. Right? Somebody lying to you, you know what I'm saying? You believe them out of the lust out of your heart. Looking like, oh yeah, but baby, I love you. I really do. You love me? How you know? Oh, baby, I love you more than anything. And then guess what? All four, you say, okay, well, you know what? The word can take a back burner. Right? I'm just gonna build a relationship because he told me he loved God. I mean, we don't ever, we don't ever actually talk about God or read the Bible or anything, but he did say in our first day he loved God. So just maybe. If I build this relationship up, maybe he'll turn around. And so you make the word secondary to that. Right? 
all these different things, the cares of the world, the cares of this worthless, vain stuff ends up being primary over the word and it the word gets choked out by it. And that's what it looked like when you sow stones, I mean, sow seeds on the, uh, when you, when you spread seeds over the thorns, right? Cause the thorns just going to choke, choke that word out. It's going to choke the seed out, right? Keep going. Let's see what else happens. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit. Some 30 fold, some 60 and some a hundred. Mm -hmm. So now he's telling us the ones that's on good soil. It grow up it just like you would expect it to. Some, some 60 fold. In other words, one seed turns into 60 plants. Right? Some even a hundred fold. One seed turns into a hundred plants. Right? Because what happens is you have that one seed, it grows. There's seeds on that. Then there's more seeds that hit and more seeds. So you start off with one, but you look down the road and it's like, dang, that's a hundred plants now. That's what he means by a hundred fold. Right? That is the person that serves the most high God where the word took root. It got deep. It doesn't get choked out. The seed doesn't get stolen by the raven. And that person is tough when it comes to this word. Some a little tougher than others. Right. Some going to be great in the kingdom. Some going to be least in the kingdom. But all of them will be in the kingdom because the word took root and they stuck to it and they are obedient to the Messiah. That is what we are here for. That's what we're here to do is to learn this word and make sure it takes root. And we can't get so high in our brain to just be like, oh, well, you know, I go to all the Sabbath studies. Right. I join all the fellowship calls and I, I, I'm on time with my reading and this, that and the other. That's not enough. Right. At any point, any of us can be any one of these seeds. In fact, some of us have been some of these seeds at different times. And praise Yah for giving us a chance to start over. Right? Every time we hear the word, we have an opportunity to be one of these seeds. The only thing we have to do is be the seed that lets it take root on good soil. And the only way to be a, a person that, that has good soil is to do the opposite of what we've been reading about. You can't let the world choke you out. You can't let the thorns choke you out. Right? You can't let you can't let the fact that you can't let the, the fact that these people that try to challenge you on how you live and try to make you feel bad about how you live, make you feel stupid about how you live, you can't let that steer you from the path. You can't let nobody steal the word from you. Right? This is what he explained to the disciples. He let the rest of these people go. And when they left, he waited till they got out of there. And he said, disciples, let me talk to y'all. It's given to y'all to understand this stuff. To them, not so much. Right? To them, I speak to them in parables. I speak to them in riddles. Just mess around. They see it and still not know what they're looking at. And they hear it and still don't know what they're listening to. Because if they did, you know what they might do? They might mess around and have their soul saved. Right? The Most High God says you have to make it past that first stage of just hearing some word and then push yourself into being a disciple. That is the only way to make it into the kingdom. Is you have to be a disciple. And there is a difference between the disciple that we reading about right now and the people that's just following Yahushua. The ones that just following Yahushua or following Jesus or following Christ, those are Christians. That is the definition of a Christian. It's the follower of Christ. But you can't just be a mere follower. That's what the multitudes were. The multitudes were followers of Christ, right? Keep going. Watch this. And he said unto them, is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed? Grab, uh, grab Matthew chapter 13 for me. Give me verse, uh, Matthew chapter 13. Give me verse, uh, give me verse 15. Uh, 
For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time. Let me let me address what Sister Pamela said real quick. So Sister Pamela said it seemed like the opposite. She said she said she she said it looks like she, she said when it comes to the thirty and the sixty fold, it it seems like the opposite of the few, right? Because the Yahushua tells us only a few will make it in, not like thirty and a hundred fold, right? We're only talking about one seed. Right. The word is that seed. Right. So when the word is planted on the person is the soil. Right. So think of it that way. The we are the soil, not the seed. Right. So when the word springs forth in a person, it becomes a hundredfold. So think of it exactly how a plant grows. Right. There's soil there and this soil produces more seeds and more plants because each plant has what coming out of it other than fruit seeds right so every plant has a whole bunch of seeds that come off of it right you think about like like uh even the plants where we don't know we don't see their seeds you think about like like uh uh what kind of plant am i thinking about like you you may not see like a roll seed Right. But what you might have is a bee that climb in that thing and then it carries all the little pollinization stuff and all the stuff they try to teach us in school and it carries it to other places. That stuff gets dropped into the ground and that causes the rolls to grow. That causes all these different things to grow. Right. So everything in it has a seed. So the ground is us. The word is the seed. So then when the word produces a hundredfold, that means our lives reflect the word 30 60 or 100 fold right so in me i then reproduce the word through my actions through my words through everything that i live and it is reproduced into such an extent that it creates a lot more seeds these then go then to other people into good soil right but then guess what some soil is going to be good some soil is going to be bad so all these seeds that's produced 30 and 60 and 100 fold don't mean that each seed represents a person that's going to end up being saved. All it means is some seed is going to be on the wayside. Some seed is going to be on rocky ground. Some seed is going to be on what, but it keeps repeating, right? Going over and over and over and over and over again. Most high God is saying, don't like you need to have good soil, right? Us need to have good soil. So that way the word can be reproduced in us and then it'll go to the next person and then they will have whatever soil that they got. Right. But when it's a hundred fold, that one seed became a plant and then reproduced to being a hundred different seeds or a hundred different plants. Right. And that's what the most high God is, is asking. Us. So it's not it's not about the it's not about the few or the many. Right. This part is not necessarily about the few or the many. The, the few and the many is saying there's only a few that will become good soil, right? So only a few will have good soil and have the opportunity to become 30, 60, and 100 fold. But many, most people are going to be one of those others. It's either going to be rocky or the thorns or the wayside. Sorry, brother. Keep going. This uh, verse, verse, what was it? Verse 15. Matthew chapter 13, verse 15. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears. Right? He's ears. talking to the disciples. He said, Blessed are your eyes for what reason? For they see. Because they see. He yeah. said, Your eyes see. So you're blessed, right? The disciples' eyes see. They're blessed. He just got done talking about the others, the Christians, right? The people that's just following Christ, the ones that just following the Messiah. He talked about them. They came. They heard the parable. What they do after that? They left, right? At first, they were clamoring to get close to him. He spoke and they left. They didn't do nothing wrong by leaving, by the way, right? It's not a sin to go home and go have dinner, right? I don't want to characterize it like they did something wrong, like they could have did something different. They're not disciples. That's just the bottom line. Remember, 
It didn't say that. It didn't say that he was begging them to stay or he told them to stay. It said that they left. And guess what he did after they left? Hey, disciples, come here. Let me explain something to you. He waited for them to leave. I want you guys to understand this until you have figured out a way to be a disciple. Y'all will wait for your butt to leave before he reveal it. He'll reveal it to every disciple right when you step out. And as disciples, we should know that sometimes we got to be patient to get our understanding because we got to wait around until everybody else leaves. Some people, it's some people that's around that's not supposed to get it. Sometimes there's people around that's not supposed to get it. We don't know who they are. We ain't going to do no good trying to guess who they are. Like, mm, God probably ain't giving me the, rev rev uh, the revelation because of so-and-so. That ain't going to make no sense. You can't figure it out. Don't try to figure it out. The only thing you could do is be obedient, stick around, do what you're supposed to do. And when the time is, the right, the time is right, the most high God is going to reveal it. That's exactly what happened to the disciples. They don't know the plan. They don't know what's going on. All they know is a whole bunch of people came. They happy. They man is preaching. They don't know what they man talking about. Like, man, none of that stuff made sense to me, right? After he, after everybody left, he came by. I was like, oh, no, it's giving y'all to understand. I can break it down for y'all. They look like, oh, for sure. Go ahead and break it down, right? Watch what they say next. Watch this. Blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which you hear and have not heard them. Hear ye, therefore, the parable of the sower. Right. So then he goes on and explain it. We already read it in chapter four. He already explained it to us. But I want you all to see how he says it a little different in Matthew chapter uh, 13. This is uh real quick. I just want you all to see the Christians. This is Matthew chapter seven, verse one. And then after that, we're going to go to Matthew chapter four, verse twenty five. Real quick. Matthew chapter seven, verse one. Then Matthew chapter four, verse twenty five. I want you all to see just the difference between the disciples and the Christians. We talking about the difference right now of the disciples and the Christians, right? So a disciple, Yahushua just identified the disciple, right? He said, he said, the disciple, he said, you are the disciples and it's given to y'all. Matter of fact, before we, uh, uh, so go ahead and read uh, uh, chapter uh, seven, verse one real quick. Judge not that ye not be, that ye be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. And with what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. No, nah, that's not what I want. That's seven? Yeah. No, nah, that's not what I want. Matthew 7. Uh, give me Matthew 4.25. It ain't Matthew 7 is what I want. Uh, is it Matthew 8 is what I want? What, what, what you looking for? Get, uh, just give me Matthew uh, 4. And they we don't followed have... him a great multitudes of the people from Galilee and from the Yeah, Cop so they followed him. How many? And there followed him great multitudes of people from Galilee and from Decapolis and from Jerusalem. Right? So the sister asked, she said, wait a minute, I might have missed this, right? The disciple, right? Isn't the disciple a follower of Christ? Right? So right here, it told you the great multitudes followed them. All them disciples? Those same great multitudes are the ones he waited till they left. And then Yah told us, he said, it's not for them. It's for you, the disciples. Let's read it again, but let's read it from Matthew. This is Matthew chapter 13, verse 10. We're going to read the same thing from the account of Matthew. It's Matthew chapter 13, verse 10. Watch the separation he makes from the great multitude versus the ones he considers disciples. And that answers our question about what it means to be a disciple, right? A lot of people think it's enough to just follow Yahushua. That's not a disciple. All these people follow him. All these Christians follow him, right? All these people read the Bible. All these people are familiar that he died on the cross. All this stuff, that's the main, that, what's the biggest religion in the world today? Christianity. If you Google that thing, it's going to tell you it's about three, I don't know how much, three billion people, I think it is. Maybe it ain't three billion, 33 million, maybe. No, I think it's 30, I think it's three billion people, 33 million denominations or something like that. I think that's how it works, right? Let's look it up. I want to know for sure. Let me see here. This is. Let's see if we can pull this up. 
Here we can pull this up real quick. I want to know for sure what it say. Let's see. Um, it just because you know Google be knowing what it's talking about sometimes. How many? Right. Oh, I gotta type it right. How many Christians? How many Christians are in the world? Right today, I want to know about today. I don't want to know all history. All right, so it says as of 2023, there are approximately 2.4 billion Christians in the world, making it the largest religion by population. Christianity is the primary religion in the Americas, Europe, Oceania, whatever that is, Sub-Saharan Africa. What's Oceania? I don't know. I gotta look that up next. I ain't never heard no darn Oshi darn Anna. That's crazy. They got new places popping up, right? But that that is the biggest religion. It's it, it claimed today is two point four. I feel like it was more. Before I feel like it was more. You know what I'm saying? Some of these Christians die and all. They killing some of these Christians, right? So if if it's the biggest religion in the world, what would that make it? Maybe a great multitude, huh? That might make it a great multitude of people. That are following Christ. That's the definition of Christian. If we look it up again and say, what's the definition of Christian? It'll tell you followers of Christ. That's great. The great multitude of people who follow Christ are Christians. That is the very definition. It's 2.2 billion. I mean, 2.4 billion of them boys. Right. That's not enough. That's not enough. That don't get the job done. We read about that. We reading it right now. He's telling us what happens with the Christians. This is Matthew chapter 10. And when I say Christians, I'm not just talking about the Christians. They're just, they're just easy to pick on. But all these people, the Hebrew Israelites too, right? Y'all are not following this book. Y'all just follow. Y'all think y'all following something? Y'all not being disciples? Which one of these groups call themselves disciples? None of them, no. Watch this though. This is Matthew chapter 10. I mean, Matthew chapter 13, verse 10. Watch the book say. And the disciples came and said unto him. The who came? The disciples came and said unto him. Why would I call myself anything else if the book is calling the men of God disciples? Why would I walk up and tell you, oh, I'm a Pentecostal? You know what I'm saying? I'm Presbyterian. What's it called? No, not, not when you eat vegetables. What is it called? I'm Pescatarian. Is that what it is? No, not that one. They might as well be darn pescadarantarian. What is it with a uh, presbyterian? What is it? I don't, I don't Vegetarian? Know. I think I always confuse it with the ones that eat only fish. They might, yeah, they are vegans. That's what I'm gonna start calling the darn vegans, the vegan Christian. You know what I'm saying? Then you got, then you got the, uh, then you got the, uh, then you got the, uh, the Baptist, right? The Catholic. You got all these different denominations. Why would I call myself any of these things? If the book is calling the men of God disciples, like what would drive you to do that if you're getting your guidance from the book? That's how you know these people are not following y'all for real. These people are not following. Because if you did, you would just say, okay, here's an easy way to do it. Why don't I pattern myself based off of what I read from this book? That's what we do. We read something in the book and we say, I'm just going to do the same thing. It don't make sense. To go try to make up something and start doing stuff that you never read in the book. Why do you think these people get to the point where they are out here randomly on the strip or on at a bar or outside of a outside of a uh what are those clinics called? The abortion clinic, telling people, no, Jesus loves you, handing out uh what they call tracts and pamphlets. You've never seen nothing like that in the book. You've never once read anything like that in the book. However, guess what? It is a tradition across multiple denominations, multiple religions, and they think they're doing what they're supposed to do. But they haven't modeled themselves after the book. Right. That's the problem. That's what separates a disciple from a Christian, a disciple from a follower of the great multitude. Right. That's the difference between the two. Let's keep reading it, though. It's Matthew chapter uh, 13. What verse? 10. Verse 10. Watch the book say. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? 
And he answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But so he's then, talking to the disciples. So he said it's given unto the disciples to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. So based off of that, if we believe the Bible, who is going to be revealed the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven? Disciples. Simple, right? That's what the book say. Why would I believe anything other than the book? It don't say Christians going to get it. It don't say Muslims going to get it. It don't say Hebrew Israelites going to get it. It says the only way you get it is going to be by being a disciple because it's given to the disciples to do it. Right? Keep going. Watch this. But to them, it is not given. Who is the them in this situation? Most. If the you in this sentence is disciples, who is the them? It's the great multitude who we affectionately call Christians because it's no different because Christians is 2.4 billion of the population, which is a great multitude, and they follow the Messiah, which is a follower of Christ, Christians, right? So the people that were following him and that left that Yahushua was saying it's not given on to them to understand the mysteries of the kingdom. Those people are effectively Christians. So now we know the separation between a Christian and a disciple. We're going to be talking about everything that it takes to become a disciple because he don't give us all this right now. But the rest of this book is about that topic. What does it take to become a disciple? And we're going to talk about that. We're going to be talking about that for the whole way through as we finish out the Gospels and the, and the epistle letters. Right. Keep going. For whosoever has, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever has not, from him shall be taken away, even that he has. Therefore, speak I to them in parables, because they say right? not. He said, that's why I speak to them in parables. Right? Because they're not supposed to get it. You are, because you're a disciple. Them, they're not supposed to get it. Yah made the separation. This is not, this is not Brother Phil making the separation. This is not me making something up. I'm reading it to y'all. He has separated two groups of people, disciples and non-disciples. And the non-disciples are not supposed to understand the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. They're not supposed to. We have to stop acting surprised that people don't get it. Because if you believe the book, these people are not supposed to get it. Sometimes we're not even going to get it until they walk away. And we don't know who these people is. Don't even try to act like we know who people are. Only job we got is to sit around and learn the book. That's it. Eventually, y'all break down anything that we need to understand, right? Just by us being dedicated to the book, dedicated to his name, dedicated to his word, right? Not dedicated to Brother Phil. Brother Phil die tomorrow. Brother Phil do whatever tomorrow. It's going to be another man of God. It's already men of God out there right now that we can go to and we can get the word, Right? It's being dedicated to the word of the most high God. We have zero excuses. It's on our phone. It's on the TV. I, I saw an app on the TV that'll read the thing to you. You know what I'm saying? You can read the whole book right from the app. There is zero excuse. Just get in the word. What it mean if you don't understand it? Did the disciples understand that parable? No. You're looking like, uh, why are you talking to them in parables? Basically, what they're saying is, don't nobody understand the stuff you were just talking about? And then he broke it down to them. Gra uh, grab, uh, grab Matthew chapter 4. Give me verse 33. Watch this. Watch this. I just want y'all to see the separation. Because this is real. This is, this is one of those things that people just don't get. It's one of those things that seems like, it seems like, oh, look at this new thing that's being taught in 2024. I'm offended when people act, come to me like that. Like, yeah, no, yeah, it's a new thing. You calling yourself a disciple. What? How is that new when it's in the book? I didn't come up with nothing new. This ain't me. This ain't, I can't put my brand on this. No, I mean, no, most people don't call themselves disciples. They call themselves, what they call themselves? Christian? Where you get it? Where you see that in the book? I'm the one that's saying something strange, though. Everything I'm saying, you see right in the book, right? I'm the one saying something strange. They walk around calling themselves Christians and Catholics and Baptists and all this stuff. Everybody accept that. Yeah, it makes sense. When have you ever read any of it? You've never read a lick of it in the book. But you accept it from them. Y'all look at that stuff and be like, oh, that makes sense. Does it? Right? But when we, when we open the book, you see what I'm talking about. The man sat there and told you, disciples over here, 
Multitudes over there. It ain't for them. It's for the disciples. Watch what he say here. This is Mark chapter 4, verse 33. Watch the book say. This is Mark chapter 4, verse 33. And we're going to see the separation. And right? With many such parables spake he the word unto them as they were able to hear it. But right? He spoke the word to the multitude with many such parables. Effectively, they are Christians. He spoke to the Christians with many such parables. For what reason? So that they can see but don't know what they darn looking at so that they can hear and don't know what they purposely he's doing this. This ain't an accident. It ain't like the Christian did something wrong. Purposely, he's saying it to them in a way they don't understand. So what separates the person who sticks around until they understand from the person that says, I'm just going to go home and get me something to eat? What separates the person that doesn't let the cares of the world get in the way of them learning this book? This is what separates it. Watch this. And with many such parables spake he the word unto them as they were able to hear it. But, but what did he do parable, to the disciples? But without a parable spake he not unto them. And when they were alone, he expounded all things to his disciples. When everybody left, he expounded. What does expounded mean? It means to thoroughly explain something, right? It means that when everybody left, he thoroughly explained everything to his disciples. Let me break that down for you. When I was talking to him about that, this is what I really meant, right? This is what was going on. This is what this means. This is another. He thoroughly explained everything to who? Disciples. To his disciples. Read it for me. And when many such parables, and with many such parables, he spake, he spake he the word unto them as they were able to hear it. But without a parable spake he not unto them. And when they were alone, he expounded all things to his disciples. Listen, I'm not making this stuff up. This is not some new teaching, right? The teaching that I'm giving y'all is the old path. This is the old way. This is the stuff that we that was stolen from us. This is the stuff that we gave up through our disobedience. And then we went into Africa and we went into slavery. Right. And then went into another darn slavery. Right. The first, the Arab slave enslaved us. You ever heard of Muhammad? You ever heard of, uh, uh, of the Muslims? Muhammad started some stuff. And after he started and died off, his Muslim people, they jumped up and they started conquering all of Africa. They enslaved the Hebrews first, right? You ever seen a white person when we talk about slavery? Like, well, you know, Africans sold Africans. Black people get mad with a white person. Look, if a white person come back, black people don't like that. Black Americans, we don't like that. You get, the, you get talking to a white person, you know what I'm saying? Listen, we came, you know what I'm saying? Y'all brought us over here in boats. And they have retort and they'd be like, well, you know, Africans sold other Africans. Because they looking like, it ain't just our fault. You know what I'm saying? Y'all talking about black power and unity? It would, We didn't act alone. Y'all think we, as hot as it is in Africa, y'all thought we just walked over there with our darn hats and some suntan, some suntan lotion? No. It looked like, no. Y'all was, was already ready when we got there. You know what I'm saying? The Africans sold the Africans. That's a fact. Because you know what happened? The Muslims conquered Africa. So you got the African, like the ones that, you know what I'm saying, stretch out their necks and, you know what I'm saying, the booty scratcher Africans. Them is the ones that they was like, okay, we don't like the clean Hebrew. You know what I'm saying? Because the Hebrew kind of clean, we like to wash. You saw our law, our law told us after everything, go ahead and wash. But these, the other African, they don't take, you know what I'm saying, they don't take no darn bath. you seen them on TV. They got the darn flies just walking across them like this. And they think in mid sentence the flies just walk right across the, 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 the pupil of their darn eyeball. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they don't even darn flinch. They just sitting there looking like, yeah. And so, anyways, all you gotta do is go down the street, and yeah, I want the fly just killing right there. Well, you, fret, you know what I'm saying? Like, you fret on the Africans like it was like the Moors, and then wasn't like bankrolling out there. Yeah, them boys was nice, but they still had the fly. Even the rich ones still had the flies on them. <laughs> There's a lot of flies because they stink. They ain't like the they ain't like the wash all the time. But it's like sometimes you could be rich. Listen, 
You ever took a day off work? Maybe two days off work? You know what I'm saying? You just sit around and you say, you know what? I don't know if I want to get in the bath today. You know what I'm saying? But you're a Hebrew, so you get up and you do it. And you say, okay, now nah, I'm going to go ahead and get in the bath. Africans have that same feeling sometimes. They don't get in the bath. You know what I'm talking about? So when you rich and you ain't got to work, what do you think you're going to do? I just sold 14 slaves to the white folks. Right? The white man just picked up 14 slaves from me. I got all this gold and molasses. What do you think I'm about to do? Go take a bath? Are you out of your mind? I'm about to go lay down and let this fly crawl on my darn eyeball. <coughs> that's crazy. Right? But that's what happened. The Muslims conquered all of Africa. They started to conquer, conquer Southern Europe. Right? And then they enslaved us, sold us to Europeans, made a lot of our women, it was mostly our women, honestly, and made us sex slaves over there in Turkey and throughout all the Middle East. And they would send us over, you know what I'm saying, do all that stuff. Right? Then after that, Europe started to regain control. So then the Portuguese and the, uh, the Portuguese and the Spaniards, they deal. So if you look on the map, right? If you look, I can't show y'all on this one, but if you look on the map, Portugal and Spain is right there. What did it say? I don't know nothing about that. Right? Portugal and Spain is right there where Africa is, right? We used to be in Northern Africa because a lot of our people left Spain. We were in Spain and we were in Portugal first. They had the Inquisition, right? So then the popes and all that started letting these people come get us because they were at war with other dark-skinned people called Moors, which were the Muslims in Africa. They at war with the Muslims, the black Muslims, right? Then we're just hanging out. Guess what we look like, though? Just like today, we look like these other people that's not really us. So when it come down to it, kill them all. They start picking us up and putting us in prison and then making us slaves. They made us slaves in this little island called Sao Tome. They made our baby slaves and all types of stuff. And so when they figured out, oh, we going to the new world, guess who helped the white folks get to the new world? The Moors, the black, the black Muslims, right? The African Muslims. They helped them get to the new world. Then they made a deal and they say, look, there's a whole lot of money to be made over here. I have an idea. We in Portugal got an island full of these Hebrew slaves. If y'all know where the rest of these Hebrews at, are at all over Africa, bundle their butts up, sell them to us. We going to bring you back some of the riches that we getting in the new world and we can call this thing even. And that's exactly what happened. Go back. That's exactly what happened, right? The word is telling you that no matter what happens, we have to stand strong with the word, not with nothing else, not no darn black power, not no darn Democrat party or Rep Republican party or nothing. We don't need to rep for none of this stuff. The only thing we need to focus on is how do we help the condition of, well, first thing we need to focus on is loving the most high God and doing what the words say. The next thing we need to focus on is how do we help the condition of our people? And how do we define our people? It's the people that serve the most high God. It's not the white folks. It's not the, it's not the black folks. It's not the Africans. It's not the Muslims. It's only people, whoever, whatever you look like, whatever you're doing, the ones that serve the most high God, those are our people. So if we cast a vote, it should be with that in mind, right? It should be with the Hebrews in mind, the real original descendants of the Hebrews, and it should be the, the descendants, or not descendants, but the people that serve the Most High God. If we do a protest, that should, that should be in mind. The rest of this stuff, man, is just the cares of the world. We can't let this stuff get to us. We got to serve the Most High God throughout whatever we do, right? This is uh, Matthew chapter uh, 13, verse 17. Let's hear some more parables. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them, 
and lo, hear and to hear those things which you hear and have not heard them. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and understands it not, then comes the wicked one and cat catches away what was sown in his heart. This Last seventeen. Yeah. Jump jump on down after after he explained the parable of the sower. We already read that in verse four, so we don't need to read that part. What verse is it? About about 24. 20, 24. Hebrews 2024. You crazy. <laughs> Go ahead. This is verse 24. Watch the book say. Another parable he put forth saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened to a man which sowed good seed in his field. But when men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was spring up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? From where then has these tares come from? And he said unto them, An enemy has done this. The servant said unto him, Will do you want us then that we should go and gather them up? But he said, No. That's why they gather up the tares, you root up also the wheat with them. Let right? both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say unto the reapers, gather ye together first the tares and bind them bundles, bind them in bundles and burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. All right? Watch this. Keep going. He's going to explain it to us. And another parable he put forth unto them saying, the kingdom oh, of heaven. Oh, you don't explain it to us? I thought he explained this one. At the end, I think he does. Can't do it real quick. See if he explained it. Uh, it's, a, it's like in... Uh, uh, verse 37, you got to go down a while, and then he started explaining. Okay, keep going there. Mm. And another parable he put forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a grain of mustard seed, which is which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air can come and lodge in the branches thereof. Mm -hmm. Another parable he spake unto them, The kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, which a woman took, and hid in three measures of meal, till the whole was leavened. And all these spake y'all sure unto the multitude in parables, and without a parable spake he not unto them. That right, so he kept them. talking to the multitude in parables, and he never talked to the multitude without a parable. Right? There's a separation there. Watch this. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. Then... Yahushua sent the multitude away and went into the house, and his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parables of the tares of the field. Right? So look, he sent the disciples, I mean, he said he sent the multitude away. This time he told them, like, all right, man, y'all, it's been a good day, man. We learned a lot today. I want y'all to go on, uh, go home, go on home, get some get something to eat now. Right? All the people left. Then after that, where are the disciples at? Right there with them, right? Disciple coming to the house with them, like, yeah, so. What was that you were talking about? That there uh boom boom room. You know what I'm saying? Like, what you what you what what was that, what was that about the wheat and the tares you were talking about? Tell us about that parable. That one was interesting, right? So watch y'all see what break it down. And he answered and said unto them, He that soweth good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burnt in fire, so shall it be at the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who, who, he, who has ears to hear, let him hear. So now when he talks about the wheat and the tares, I think we need to see a visual because everybody there probably be familiar with the wheat and tares and the differences of them. But I think we need to look at a visual. So on the left hand, I mean, on the left hand side, you have wheat. On the right hand side, you have tares. This is after you grow them. This is before they fully grown. Right. They all green. They look very similar. Right. All right. They're technically different. And you can look at them very closely and you can tell that they are different. But first glance, them things look mighty similar. So that's why in the parable, the servants asked, they said, look, who sold all these tares? Right. And and the master was like, it must have been an enemy that did this. So they said, look, you want us to get these up? And they're like, no, 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 no. 
wait until they fully grown. And after that, I'll tell the servants to go pull up all the tares first, go burn them with fire and then gather all the wheat. So in this parable, the wheat represents those who are going to enter into the kingdom. The tares represents the sinners, the enemy who, who, who planted the, the seeds of the tares. That represents Satan. Right. And what Yah is saying that is he's going to harvest up all of the people that are saints, the disciples, the ones that are obedient. And then he's going to burn in fire all the sinners, which are going to be the tares. If you look at the visual of it, the visual would suggest, let me put it on the big screen for y'all. Right. The visual would say it's a little difficult to tell the difference between a wheat and a tear. Right. So that's why he said, let them grow, because after it grows, this is what they look like. Right. Now, although same color. What do you notice is the difference between these two? Right. If you look on the left hand side where the wheat is, when the wheat is full grown, it bows over like this. Right. Right. It kind of hangs itself down like that. Right. But tear when it's full grown, that there, that it stands straight up. Right. So once they're full grown, now you can clearly see the difference. So now you can say, OK, I separate this. I separate that. Why does Yah want us to fully grow? Because our behavior is going to show the difference. Right. At any point before we are right, before we are full grown, we have an opportunity to change our life. We have a choice to say we are wheat or we are tares. And if we bow our hearts to the most high God, just like just like the wheat kind of bows itself over, then guess what? The most high God to pick us up. He'll harvest us. But if we refuse to be bent and we stand straight up and it can't nothing move us, the most high God, the word don't move us, then he going to pull us up and he going to burn us. Right. This is the parable that when the disciples heard it, they're looking like, what, what does that mean? You know what I'm saying? What is, uh, what is, you know what I'm saying? Like, what exactly is that talking about? Right? That parable is telling us you have to endure until the end. Your behavior has to make it until the end. Because at the end, that's when y'all going to look at it and say, okay, that person was full grown. Time for me to harvest them. You know what I'm saying? They pulled up the wheat where they live in a life that I, you know what I'm saying? Did they repent from all sins? Okay, great. Let's bring them into the kingdom, right? When they wake up, they're going to wake up in the resurrection. Keep going. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in the field, which men, which a man has found. He hid, he hideth and for joy thereof go and selleth all that he has and buyeth that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who when he has found one pearl of a great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind, which when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but cast the bad away. So shall it be at the end of the world. The angel shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Yahshua said unto them, have you understood all these things? So Yahushua stopped. He is saying all these par parables. And he looked at the disciples and he said, have you, who is he talking to? The disciples. He's only talking to the disciples, right? He stopped and he said, have you understood all these things? And what did the disciples say? And they said unto him, yes, Lord. They said, yes, Lord. Yes, master. Right? Then watch what Yahushua say. Then said he unto them, therefore, every scribe, which is instructed into the kingdom of unto the kingdom of heaven. He said like every him. scribe. We understand a scribe to be an expert in the law. Right. Somebody who takes the scripture or the law and they copy it. Right. So every expert in the law who is also instructed into the kingdom of heaven is what? Is like unto a man that is a householder, which bringeth forth out of his treasure things new and old. Right. So every scribe 
who's instructed onto the kingdom. That means he's an expert in the law and he understands the kingdom. It's just like somebody who owns a house and got a storehouse and he has old stuff coming out of that, that store and new stuff coming out of the store. There is no way to understand this book unless you understand the Old Covenant, the Old Testament, and the New Covenant, the New Testament. Right? This is the point of what Yahushua is telling us. You have to put the whole thing together, but still notice that he's saying there's a difference. There is an old and there is a new, and they both work together, but they are not the same. Right? They both work together. They are both necessary. You won't understand it unless you got somebody who can instruct in both, right? You got to be an expert. If you are a scribe that is a teacher also of the kingdom, it's like, man, it's like being able to go and be like, what, what you want? You want the old ones or the new ones? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I got the ones and the dub zero. You know what I'm talking about? I got the ones that just came out and the ones that came out 20 years ago. Right? You have it all. That's how our minds have to be. That's what we have to prepare ourselves to be. Right? We have to be able to handle the old and the new. Any questions? We got some questions in there. What question they ask? Weeping willows versus Christmas trees. <laughs> The tear doesn't look up advertising, kind of scary looking at it, looking like it hurts. Scroll up for me, boy. Nah, scroll up down there where the chat is. Hold on, slow, slow. Definitely gonna ask you as a town. Okay, keep going. Who laughing? What are they laughing at? Presbyterian. Mm. What was I saying? I think that's what I was saying, right? Presbyterian? Let me see, scroll up a little more. Oh, yeah. I don't even read that one. Keep going. I make sure I ain't miss no question. Yeah, I think I got them all. I might have missed some at the very beginning. But... Nah, you, down. Just missed, you just missed him laughing at your shirt. That was it. <laughs> what? <laughs> laughing at. Scroll down. All right. Well, let's pray out. Nobody care if you're tired, boy. What's wrong with you? You ain't even old enough to be tired. 